Sven Hameling is the Global Policy Co-Lead on Climate Justice at CARE International. He joins us now from Bonn in Germany. Really good to have you back with us, Sven. The planet marked an ominous milestone last Friday, the first day that global heating crossed the two degrees threshold that climate scientists have warned could have calamitous consequences. It breached that level only briefly, but it's not a good sign, is it? It's definitely not a good sign, even if it's a, a let's say, a very momentous event. And we know that also the uh, climate phenomenon El Nino is contributing to particular temperature increases this year. Uh, but as also the UN Secretary General has highlighted, we're really uh, not on track. We're on the wrong course. Um, the continued burning of fossil fuels is really heating up the planet in a way that the future of billions of people is basically at stake. And I mean, if we look at this year, just of the wildfire phenomena, we have seen the drought in the Amazon, other extreme events, already at 1.5 degrees of warming, uh, the, the consequences are extreme for many people on this planet. So we really must shift course now. Yes, and we heard in the story uh, just before that uh, all this comes ahead of the UN Climate Summit, COP28, in uh, Dubai that's due to take place at the end of this month. Uh, there was a bit of controversy when it was announced it would be held in the UAE, given that uh, the country is heavily reliant on fossil fuels. It gets uh, much of its wealth from oil. Uh, what's your feeling about this upcoming summit. Do you think it will achieve uh, the progress that's needed in order to rein in global heating? First, I must say that in the end, it matters what countries do back home, right? Um, governments need to implement the plans they've set up and advance them. Um, but of course, this uh, annual climate conference is an important rallying point. I and mean, I think um, this year, maybe more than ever before, we see a strong focus on really, you know, agreeing on a phase out of fossil fuels um, and accelerating that. I think in many countries there are positive dynamics uh, in that regard, uh, but it's also important to get to that agreement now. And um, you mentioned uh, the government of Dubai hosting the COP. Uh, it's very important that they understand their role. They are to facilitate uh, progress and agreements among the parties that we can really still keep the 1.5 degrees. Uh, warming goal. Um, and uh, their, their own, let's say, near-term interests potentially have to step back on that because there are so many countries who want to move forward more quickly uh, and who also understand how severe the impacts will be. So I think it's important to increase the pressure in the next two to three weeks. Um, we from CARE, we will be on the ground at the COP and many others uh, as well and, and to hold the countries accountable. And we know it's poorer countries who are suffering the consequences of global heating that's largely been caused by wealthier nations. The issue of climate financing to help these poorer countries mitigate the effects of global heating has been a perennial issue at these UN climate summits. Richer countries have been very reluctant to pay up and help fund these mitigation measures for those countries worst affected. Are you expecting any progress on that front this time around? We definitely expect progress on the further setting up of the so-called loss and damage fund uh, based on the agreement last year and some of the work that happened this year. But what is now critical, of course, is that a real money is put on the table and that also uh, the richer countries uh, uh, really finally deliver on the previous uh, commitments they've made. But we also know that there's a lot of money out there in the world. Um, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the largest part of the emissions is caused by a relatively low percentage um, uh, of the world's population, the richer population. Uh, and I think there's more ways to tap into that, that wealth that is there and, and, and hold some of those accountable and, and to deliver more finance into really supporting those who are most affected and particular in, in developing countries and, and many women and girls, as we know from our work at CARE, where, where we uh, try a lot to support those uh, vulnerable and affected groups. So uh, I think we need to keep up the pressure at this COP, um, but it will not be the final point and we need to continue working on, on new fine sources of finance as well. Okay, Sven Hammerling, we'll have to leave it there for now, but thank you so much as always for joining us.